All right, so as committed, I really wanted to work on helping us take a quantum leap in terms of how we backtest for pairs in statistical arbitrage pairs trading. And this is something that I've been working very hard on. And since launching the course, it just became very clear that it w there was a need, right? We need better tooling around backtesting. I couldn't find anything else out there online that could, you know, improve this process and make it a lot faster. And I committed to working on this. And so this is working, it's launched and it's here. And I'm gonna talk through how to use it now. Now, before I do that, I do wanna say that this is on Crypto Wizards, of course. This is what the tooling has been developed for. If you're not on Crypto Wizards, then absolutely don't worry. I'm going to be covering a lot of backtesting concepts in this video as well, because I wanna make sure that whether you use Crypto Wizards or not, you're walking away from this video with a lot of value. If you're not interested in that and you're not interested you know, in the platform, just move on. You don't need to watch this video at all. It, it has no impact to the quality of the course, uh, et cetera. But this is for those of you who, you know, we're really waiting for this and we're asking for this. So let's get into that now. Again, if you're not using it, continue with Excel. You can also Google certain things on how to, for example, write some of the uh, metrics that I'm gonna show you using Python because uh, through doing the course as well. A lot of you now will know um, some Python as well. You have enough Python knowledge to do that. Um, so please, you should be able to take away the lessons here regardless uh, and implement them in your strategy. So the first thing we wanna do is just go over here to Z-score. And so I'm running here Ethereum to Chainlink. And right now they look co-integrated and this can change on a dime. I had somebody very smart, they were writing into me and they were like, hey, Sean, something is co-integrated and a few seconds later it wasn't. That's okay because the price is live. If you notice the P value, the T value and the C value are very close um, to, to being correct in terms of the T value you know, being less than the C value and the P score being less than 0 0.05. If they're not quite doing that, it doesn't mean that this is a bad pair to trade. It doesn't mean that. So you know, not everything has to be green like it is right now. Uh, but regardless, there's nothing that's changed here, right? You've got your price charts, you've got your spread, uh, beautiful spread here actually on Chainlink and Ethereum. And here you've got your Z-score. And so what I'm gonna do now is show you this bit here. This is where the magic is. So if you click on show backtest options, and also there's something on the pre-screened I've added for you as well that is in line with what I've taught everyone on how to do in the course. Um, so it's going to automate that for you, just as I think I mentioned before, I'll cover that at the end of the video. But for now, let's look at the, these backtesting options. So there's a number of things we can do here. So here I've got my Z-score as the signal. I could change that to the spread. So if I change this to the spread, that means that my signal, my trigger will now be the spread. It'll ignore Z-score for making trading decisions. But you know, I'm always using Z-score. It's just because somebody on the channel was like, cool, but you know, what happens if, um, and you know who you are, by the way, I should point you out. Um, but it was a great point. What happens if I use the spread? Well, actually, from what I can see, it actually still works if you use the spread. But I, I actually built this with you in mind. So I put that in there for you. Um, so I, I thought it was a good idea. And then the long ticker just means, you know, if the Z score or the signal is negative, i.e. it's below zero, so the spread is below zero or the Z score is below zero, depending on what you're using here, we're using Z-score. What is the ticker that you wanna go long on when it's negative? And here it's Ethereum, right? So I'm always thinking about going long because long is typically what you do when the, the signal is negative. The one you're buying is gonna be Ethereum, the one you're shorting is gonna be Chainlink. Now you can swap those around. So if you get a, a result you don't like, you can just you know flip them around from Ethereum to Link uh, or whatever cryptos or stocks, or this will work for commodities. Um, so if you select FMP, just a side note, commodities, forex, stocks, all of that. Uh, S&P 500 versus pink elephants, you can do whatever you want there. Um, but you can flip which ticker you're going long on. Uh, the window here, this is just, I use 21 because as mentioned in the course, I like the film. Now the open trades at and the closed trade at, um, the open trade at and the closed trade at, sorry, these are always going to be positive. So for example, this is saying, all right, go long. Let's say I'm using Z-score. When I have 1.5, it's saying, go long if the Z-score reaches negative 1.5. Go short when it reaches um, positive 1.5. 
right? That's what this open trade at means. The close trade at means close the trade when the z-score crosses to the other side and hits 1.5. So for example, if I open a trade at negative 1.5 and up here I've set it at 1.5, it will close the trade when the z-score is hit 1.5 on the positive side. Conversely, if I open a pairs trade here with the z-score at positive 1.5, it will close the trade once the z-score is touched negative 1.5. If I want it to be mean reverting to zero, I would just make that zero. Uh, for now, I'll just leave it at 1.5. That's what I've defaulted it at. Now you can put any value you want. If you're trading the spread, then you would use say 40 negative and 40 positive. It depends on what this chart is telling you, right? So this is, this is how you would decide what to use essentially. Um, and then here we've got the closed time step. So this is, let's say for example, I don't want to even close the trade at just 1.5. I also wanted to make sure that it closes within three time steps or two time steps, etc. So that's, you know, that's something you can do as well. If you don't want to use that, just leave it at zero. Typically I leave that at zero now. Um, and then you can put this, you know, these values to whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it at 1.5 and 1.5. Um, you know, for example, I could put this to zero or 0 0.1 or whatever, uh, just as mentioned now. And then lag result, this is just to avoid look ahead bias. So it, it lags the trade by one time period. And you'll see because there's a PDF report I'm going to show you, there's a full backtesting report. It's a five page report that you're going to get as well uh, if you wanted more detail of the backtest. And it will look like the trade is not placing at the right value. Well, that's not the case. It's actually to do with, um, it's actually to do with avoiding what's called look ahead bias. So typically I will leave this at yes, but what I'd recommend is run it at yes and no, because when you're trading crypto, it's kind of dubious as to whether you need to do that. And it also depends on how you're executing. So it's quite a tricky one, you know, for me to really go into detail of, but what I would say is, you know, flip between these two and take the worst of the two and assume that's the result you'll get. Right. And remember as well, the one I uh, say, assume the result you should get, you'll get, I need to be careful there. in what I say, just because something works in the past doesn't mean it works in the future, right? That's why we do forward testing. That's why we do the statistical arbitrage course. We learn to build a bot. We trade in testnet with the bot so that you know how to build a bot for production, but equally you can use the same bot for forward testing. Very important. But now let's actually run the back test. So all I'm going to do is click this button. Um, obviously when you know what you're doing, you don't need to bother with all that. It takes seconds, right? You find a, a pair, you click the back test and you see what happens. You find a pair, you click the back test, you see what happens, rinse and repeat. So actually Chainlink and Ethereum um, comes out pretty strong. And honestly, most of these do. Um, this is not some rare occasion here. Like I've been playing a lot with this. I find most of the time they do. And I'll show you how to, you know, best navigate that. The ROI is 10%. Um, this is over a two week period that we've run this on. The sharp ratio is 1.5, which is pretty good. So sharp ratio, think of it like this in very loose terms. Again, I don't want to make the quants out there who watch this vomit and be like, Sean, please, you need to be more accurate. But the sharp ratio essentially means for every dollar of risk or volatility, I'm getting a dollar fifty back in return. That's how you can think of the sharp ratio. It's a very important metric and it's very useful um, when comparing it to how other pairs did. You know, for example, let's say this one had an ROI of 10%. And another pair I checked at 20%. Well, the one with the better sharp ratio is the one I would choose because that actually means that it's doing pretty well in comparison to how volatile it is. Uh, the win rate as well. We've spoken about win rate a lot on the channel. I won't go into that now, but here's the PDF report. So if you just click that, you can download it, save it, you know, email it, whatever you want to do. Um, this gives you a five page report, which I'm going to talk you through now. And it's got all sorts of great information on. Very quickly, I wanted to mention also, don't forget that usually when you run these tools, it will automatically save an Excel file for you as well. So for example, uh, it'll save something called pairs backtest. You can go and download it straight into Excel. So for example, if you just hit the down arrow on it, and if, for, for those of you who still want to play in Excel, basically, you can just do that. Um, you can open it from here and then jump into Excel to go and manipulate and play with, you know, play with the trades. So here it'll tell you, this is down each time step tells you what the close price was. It gives you all the metrics. It tells you what the calculations were. 
So for anyone who wants to analyze that, go ahead. I will warn you though, when you do this, you are entering Pandora's box. This is many hours of calculations, etc. Some number, some columns are in log, some columns are not. So it's very easy to get thrown off. But for those of you who are interested in having the data, it's right here for you. Okay, back to the PDF report. So the first thing is your summary table here. It's got your win rates at the top and your returns down here. So here's your sharp ratio, 1.54, um, your cumulative return. So this is your ROI essentially, return on investment, and then your annual return um, over here. So that's essentially what, you know, what this is looking at over here. The sharp ratio here, there's some other ratios I'm gonna do videos on the channel on because I want to dedicate a whole video to these. Um, it's very important for people that are interested in backtesting. But sharp ratio, for example, looks at volatility. Kalmar, for example, um, I believe it's, sorry, Kalmar. Yep, it's Kalmar, which takes into account the maximum drawdown rather than volatility. The skew kurtosis annual volatility. Well, actually, the skew and kurtosis is something, again, I'm going to talk separately on. What I want to do, rather than go into the detail of these metrics, is talk to you about this here. So, for example, look at this blue line here. This sums up statistical arbitrage perfectly. These returns here, so this is not so much an equity curve. This is actually just looking at, think of it like your account balance. So it's saying if I started with $1 based on all the closed trades, what, how many dollars did I end up with, right? So here we hit just under 1.1. Um, there could still be a trade open, for example, where you're still banking. You'll notice that this 1.1, it's slightly lower than this number. This is using the actual returns for each time step, right? So it's weighing up no matter what point in time you, you sort of looked uh, at your portfolio, how are you performing? This is looking at the end of all my closed trades. How did I do? And you're pretty much here at 1.1. Um, the green line is saying, you, you know, uh, chain link over here. So you've got a key down here, how that performed. And the pink line here is Ethereum. Now, it makes sense that in pairs trading, one of the coins isn't doing well right? That's, the, that's kind of the point. One coin typically isn't going to do well and the other will. The arbitrage comes where one is doing better than the other one, right? There's a convergence between the prices. And so that the net of the two is the blue line, which is the net, right? The net of both of these are the blue line. So this is something I'm looking at. Uh, I find it very useful. Here we have the drawdown. So this is like looking at your risk over time. So you can see your maximum drawdown net is about 5%. Very, very handy to know. Um, and drawdown as well, I will do a separate video on because drawdown is very important to know, um, you know, what drawdown is and what it's actually calculating because it's not, typically it's not calculating exactly what you think it is. It's actually taking peaks to troughs rather than zeros to troughs. Um, don't worry if that didn't make sense. It's not the purpose of this video. We've got a rolling sharp ratio in as well. Now these graphs will be blank if there's not more than 127 time periods in your analysis. Um, so that's just something that's very you know important to know. So you, you know look at the range of time steps that this is over. It's it might or might not be useful if you're doing this over a long time frame, like for example six months of hourly data or a year worth of daily data then these become relevant because they show you when your sharp ratio improved or worsened, etc. Um, this here shows you the opening and closing of your trades. And I love it because it shows you the signals on the prices. It shows it to you on the spread and it shows it to you on the Z-score. So the Z-score is what we use as the signal, but it's telling you at what point, you know, what was the value of the spread when that Z-score signal got triggered? What was the value of the price, you know, compared to the other price when the Z-score got triggered? So it's telling you where the trades were opened and closed. So for example, here we had a trade open and here we had one closed, opened and closed, open, closed. And it's not about the, the, you know, the pair going up or down. It's about the convergence and divergence. Like this here is a beautiful trade. Look at this, right? So it opened here and it closed when they, they touched each other essentially. Um, so you can think of it like that, but it's doing it based on the Z score. So you can see here, you know, open, closed. Now remember, we're lagging one time step. So you might see that, oh, it, it didn't close where I expected it to on the Z-score. Well, that's because we put some lag in it, right? This is just to try to avoid look ahead bias, etc. It's a back test. It's not going to be perfect, right? A back test does not 
tell you, just because this worked in the past, by the way, doesn't mean it's going to work in the future. We've mentioned that. Um, so just be careful of that. But I find this very useful because it kind of shows me um, more than anything, it shows me the frequency of the trigger happening and where it kind of happened in, in ratio in relation to what the price action was doing. So it's just it's just context for me and I find it very useful. So I wanted to put it in. And then down here, the returns. Right. So this is also useful. It's actually more useful, I think, other than pairs trading. I also find it very useful because I've, I've built the same PDF report, by the way, for those of you who use the back test, uh, back trader back testing here. And by the way, this is not the same as back trader, the Python library. This is uh, like a proprietary back testing, um, uh, you know, uh, algorithm here. It's not what the video is about, but you can back test anything. It doesn't have to be pairs trading, right? It can be anything. Um, the same PDF report has also been developed with the same inf information there as well, uh, just so you're aware. And the returns there is, you know, are also very, very useful, um, essentially. And then down here, we've got the, uh, the log returns as well. So this is actually just showing you the distribution of returns. So that's pretty much it. You know, I hope that you found this part useful. I did want to just jump over here very quickly, going back to our Z-score tool, um, over here to the pre-screen tab, actually. So if we go to this pre-screen tab, you'll see that what it's doing now is it's giving you some numbers and it didn't do this before. And for everyone who's, you know, done the course or has been through, you know, the course um, through the strategy section of the course, you know how to calculate this yourself now in Python, right? I'm, I'm never holding anything back. There's nothing I'm, I'm not telling anyone, right? I always want to give you everything. So you know how to do that. But um, there's this zero crossing count. And so this is to help you see where the spread has a lot of crosses on the zero, because typically for me, that's what I'm looking for. And so what I'll do here now is order these in order of high to low. Now you could do low to high or high to low. You could say, okay, um, because this runs quite often as well. Um, it says update each hour. I'm actually now working to get this to update every half an hour. So I'll let you know when that's done. But it looks at the, the Z-score, right? And it'll tell you, um, it will actually uh, tell you if the Z, what are the big movers in Z-scores? That's what this tool does. But now it also tells you how good, how healthy does that spread look? And, you know, some of these, there was like one cross on the spread. So why am I interested in that one? Probably I'm not. Um, so this is a really good way to filter what are useful. So let me just take the top one as an example. Um, and let's just run that. I've not looked at this yet, so I don't know what it'll look like. Okay, it's still co-integrated, which is nice. Uh, very often that can change. Beautiful chart here. An absolutely stunning spread absolutely stunning spread. Of course, we had this wacky move here, which is perfect actually for pairs trading. Um, but look at look at this absolutely perfect spread. However, what does it actually look like if I back test this? So uh, let's just, you know, start with our defaults. So we'll just run a quick live back test together, see what this comes out like. Is it actually profitable? So let's have a look. And it is very profitable ROI of 1.5. Um, so, you know, 50% return. Now, again, if you see anything like that, be terrified. Okay. That's, you're probably not going to get a 50% return. It is just a back test. Uh, really nice sharp ratio, excellent win rate. And PDF report, of course, is always going to be the same, right? That is always going to have the same five page report. Um, but look at this, right? Now, the reason why the net return is so good. So look at this. This is interesting. Right. The, ne the reason is because this coin here has performed very well. This one didn't really lose very much. Right. So it was more that one coin just went AWOL um, and, and reverted back to the mean. So that's a perfect that's a perfect opportunity in pairs trading when you get that. Um, so wonderful. Let's change this to 1.1. Let's you know, let's just see if that makes much of a difference. So I'm going to go and hit back test here. And uh, there we go, extracting data, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's this moment of suspense for me. I always have this moment of suspense. What's it going to show? Okay, it's a lot worse. So, so this is somewhere you might want to be really careful here, right? So your signal is really important, right? Don't just assume 1.5 is okay or 1.1 or whatever. In this example, 1.1 didn't work. So now you can test some different ranges. Now, remember, forward test. Okay, feature importance, 
machine learning for those of you who use crypto is it's use the machine learning for feature importance if you want to um you know but just take things with a pinch of salt be very careful out there some results can look amazing it doesn't mean that's what the future is going to hold right it, it doesn't mean that but at least here you have an edge you've got math behind you you've got science behind you. you've got back test reports behind you now this is in beta right the whole of crypto is it's is a beta software this is me just building stuff that i find really useful and sharing it with the community so you know please be careful i just want to underline that but regardless i think you know i think this tool is fantastic for me it's proving to be extremely useful and i'm hoping that it's come through for you as well See you in the next video.